What's going on everybody? Welcome to another episode of Ars Reads the Bible. Today we're going to be starting with Numbers 23. It's not too long, 24 so-so, so I'll probably read both. As usual, I've got my highlighter, i got my decaf java juice, and i got the living word of God. And I also got a new phone for today. It's the S22 Ultra. We'll see if it's better than the Note 9 I had back in the day. Back in the day. I only had it for five, six years. <laughs> now, I remember when I was young, Wonder why old people talk the way they did. And here I am starting to talk like old people. Because I am getting old. You know, 53 normally wouldn't be that old. But when you got heart failure and COPD and diabetes and everything else, 53 is old. But anyway, let me get these spectacles off. Oh, my eyes are so tired. And we'll go ahead and get reading, shall we? 23. Then Balaam said to King Balak, Build me seven altars here and prepare seven young bulls and seven rams for me to sacrifice. Balak followed his instructions, and the two of them sacrificed a young bull and a ram on each altar. Then Balaam said to Balak, Stand here by your burnt offerings, and I will go see if the Lord will respond to me. Then I will tell you whatever he reveals to me. So Balaam went alone to the top of a bare hill, and God met him there. Balaam said to him, I have prepared seven altars, and have sacrificed a young bull and a ram on each altar. The Lord gave Balaam a message for King Balak. Then he said, Go back to Balak and give him my message. So Balaam returned and found the king standing beside his burnt offerings with all the officials of Moab. This was the message Balaam delivered. Balak summoned me to come from Aram. The king of Moab brought me from the eastern hills. Come, he said, curse Jacob for me. Come and announce Israel's doom. But how can I curse those whom God has not cursed? How can I condemn those whom the Lord has not condemned? I set them from the cliff tops. I watch them from the hills. I see them from the cliff tops. Sure will be one of them times. I watch them from the hills. I see a people who live by themselves, set apart from other nations. Who can count Jacob's descendants as numerous as dust? Who can count even a fourth of Israel's people? Let me die like the righteous. Let my life end like theirs. Then King Balak demanded of Balaam, What have you done to me? I brought you to curse my enemies. Instead, you have blessed them. But Balaam replied, I will speak only the message that the Lord puts in my mouth. Then King Balak told him, Come with me to another place. There you will see another part of the nation of Israel, but not all of them. Cursed at least, curse at least that many. So Balak took Balaam to the plateau of Zophim on Pisgah Peak. He built seven altars there and offered a young bull and a ram on each altar. Then Balaam said to the king, Stand here by your burnt offerings while I go over there to meet the Lord. And the Lord met Balaam and gave him a message. Then he said, Go back to Balak and give him my message. So Balaam returned and found the king standing beside his burnt offerings with all the officials of Moab. What did the Lord say? Balak asked eagerly. This was the message Balaam delivered. Rise up, Balak, and listen. Hear me, son of Zippor. God is not a man, so he does not lie. He is not a human, so he does not change his mind. Has he ever spoken and failed to act? Has he ever promised and not carried it through? Listen, I received a command to bless. God is blessed, and I cannot reverse it. No misfortune is in his plan for Jacob. No trouble is in store for Israel. For the Lord their God is with them. He has been proclaimed their king. God brought them out of Egypt. For, for them he is as strong as a wild ox. No curse can touch Jacob. No magic has any power against Israel. For now it will be said of Jacob, What wonders God has done for Israel. These people rise up like a lioness like a majestic lion rousing itself. They refuse to rest until they have feasted on prey, drinking the blood of the slaughtered. Then Balak said to Balaam, Fine, 
But if you won't curse them, at least don't bless them. This guy don't get it, does he? This Balaam's going to listen to God. But Balaam replied to Balak, Didn't I tell you that I can do only what the Lord tells me? Then King Balak said to Balaam, Come, I will take you to one more place. Perhaps it will please God to let you curse them from there. Not going to happen. So Balak took Balaam to the top of Mount Peor, overlooking the wasteland. Balaam again told Balak, Build me seven altars and prepare seven young bulls and seven rams for me to sacrifice. So Balak did as Balaam ordered and offered a young bull and a ram on each altar. My throat's a little raspy. I think I am going to end there today with just 23, but I wanted to try out my new phone and read some word of God. So, ah, there we go. I don't know, video looks a little washed out. I don't know. Looks brighter. But I think I made an adjustment, something about brightness. I can't remember. But I gotta admit, so far, and trust me, because I'm not a fan of Samsung. My wife is, not me. My TV, I'm having a little bit of problem with. Our washer, a lot of problems with. The last Note 9 had problems with. I'm not a big fan of Samsung. But I will say, thus far, I haven't been able to find any fault with it. And trust me, I've been looking. If I can find fault in this phone, people won't know about it. <laughs> I don't know. You know, it's kind of one of them things. Burn me once. Oops on you. Or, oops on me, burn me twice, oops on you, don't burn me a third time. One of those things. I'm just not a big fan of Samsung. It, it's, you'll notice a trend, especially here in America. Well, none of these companies are American, though. But, you know, all of these companies were once great. Walmart used to only sell, or the majority of stuff they sold was, and you remember the slogan, made in the USA. Well, now you ought to get a reward if you find something in that store made in the USA. Um, you know, Samsung used to be really good. A lot of things used to be really good till they diversified and started branching into other stuff. Like Samsung did TVs, and that was pretty much it. You know, they did phones, they did TVs, that was it. Now they do Oh, our stove is Samsung, too. And it's backwards the way stuff works. It must be a Korean thing. I don't know. But anyway, the, now they're doing appliances. You know, washers and dryers. Stoves. Refrigerators. They do tablets. They do earbuds. They do just about... They do sound systems. You know, everything is Samsung. And I think that's when stuff started going wrong. You know, that would be like, well, for instance, with art, because I'm an artist. You know, I do, well, I kind of do two things really good. I do spray paint and I do drawing really good. But in acrylic flows, yeah, pretty good. Um, but like oils, airbrush, uh, pastels, yeah, not so good. Average at best. Now, if I would just spend my time concentrating on drawing only or on spray paint only, I mean, the my level of expertise in that area would just skyrocket. And I'll tell you why I know, because I've seen it in a lot of other artists. I've seen artists that, for instance, spray paint, because for some reason I'm friends with mostly spray paint artists. I just, I find spray paint art fascinating. You know, I've noticed when they first started, it was, I remember looking at their stuff, and, you know, of course I didn't tell them this, because you never want to discourage an artist, because everybody's got to start somewhere, and you're only going to get better the more you practice. 
that's with sports, that's with anything. But I remember seeing them, and I was like, oh, you know, that's a little rough, you know. You can you could obviously tell they were just beginning in spray paint. And I was the same way when I first started spray paint. You could tell my stuff, you know, the planets were, there would be paint leakage because I didn't use the right kind of lid or didn't wait long enough for it to dry. You know, the stuff, where you could tell, stuff that comes with practice hadn't been practiced yet. But now that it's been, you know, four, five, six years later, I see these same individuals on Facebook, on YouTube, in my art group, and their stuff is just, it just blows my mind. It's phenomenal, you know, and it's, but that's predominantly what they do is just this, this form of art is spray paint, and that's it. And they are pretty much mastering it. They're not, they're knocking it out of the park. You know, if, if I seen what it was when they began and I see what they have now, didn't see in between, I would swear it's not the same artist. There's no way, you know, you could tell the difference in the levels of, of talent and expertise in that. But, and I think I would be the same way if I just focused on one thing, you know, Unfortunately, probably my best area is drawing. Um, that's what everybody wanted to commission me for. That's what everybody thinks looks the most realistic. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of patience. So, unfortunately, <laughs> that's probably not going to happen. And spray paint. You know, I don't have a specific art studio for spray paint. Some spray paint artists have, like, their basement or a dedicated garage or something. You know, I don't have that. I have a garage, but it's, you know, I've got a our 2017 Ford Explorer sitting in there. I'm not about to get spray paint over spray. So in order to spray paint, i got to back it out way back to the end of the driveways. I don't want to overspray. I got to get my floodlight set up because my garage is very dark. And if I do it outside, if it's too much wind, then sprays going everywhere and it ends up on me and in my face. And it's like, ugh. <laughs> so, of course, outside, I don't have to really wear much of a respirator. In the garage, I do. It's just it's a big old hassle. And then I got, because I don't store my spray cans out there, I got to pick out kind of plan what I'm going to do, pick out whatever cans I want, take them out there, come find out these couple don't work because they're three, four years old. So then I gotta go try to find another can and it's, oh. as you can tell, I don't have a lot of patience. I'm not, I'm not a patient person, you know, and I'm going to tell you something. I think it's why my dental work with the VA took so long because I've been praying to God to give me patience. And lo and behold, screw up after screw up after screw up after screw up with the VA. You know, dental work took 10 months, which should have took about two weeks. So, you know, when you pray to God for, like, patience, you know, I'm not saying he won't do it. He could just be like, okay, there's your patience. But usually I think God tries to teach you a lesson along the way. Like if you pray for patience, he's going to put you in situations that require patience. And the more, and you know, if you like me and stubborn and stiff neck like Israelites, um, he's going to keep putting you in these situations until you learn patience. You prayed for it. You must want it. So he's going to teach you like a father teaches a child. He's going to teach you what you're praying for. If you pray for kindness, you want to be more kind to people, more loving to people. It's like I said, he may just, okay, here you go. You're more loving. But I think maybe he'll teach you a lesson. Okay, you want to be more loving? I'm going to present you in front of people who are hateful to you, who are not kind to you, who are argumentative to you, so that you 
have to learn how to love or be kind to this person, even though they're not kind to you. You know, there's no, be careful what you pray for, you know. And I kind of laughed at the colonel at, at my dental appointment, and I was like, he's like, man, I'm so sorry. If something got messed up again, and I said, no, you know, I know what it is. I know what it is, because he's Christian, too. I said, I, I understand what it is. I prayed for patience. God is teaching me how to be patient. This is all a lesson in patience. And the colonel kind of laughed. He said, yeah, be careful what you pray for. <laughs> but anyway, as far as what we read today, you know, Balak kept trying to get Balaam to curse the Israelites. And Balaam had told him numerous times, I'm only going to give you the message that God gives me. And God did not want them cursed. He wanted them blessed. And old Balak, well, let's try over here. You know, well, let's try over here. Dude, you think he'd get, get the point and be like, it's not going to happen. Israelites are God's chosen people. Israel is God's chosen people. He's not going to curse them. Well, he did before. Um, they have made God so angry that he wiped out a lot of them. If it had been for Abraham or Moses or what have you, they would have been wiped out because they angered God so much. You know, so I, I believe that's probably why Israelites are so fond of Abraham and Moses because <laughs> they kind of saved their butts quite a few times, you know. So, you know, oh boy, what just wasn't getting a picture, was he? You know, I'm not going to go against God, you know. And even if he had went against God, it wouldn't have, would have been no avail. You could go against God and curse the Israelites all you want. If God don't want it to happen, it ain't going to happen. So you just, you, well, like I'm saying, I'd say you're farting in the wind. I just gone, you know. Not going to, nothing's going to come to it. It's not coming to fruition. So it's a waste of time, you know. And Balaam knew that. He didn't want to go against God anyway. So smart man, by the way. You know. Well, we all go against God pretty much every day because we all sin, and God hates sin. So, you know, uh, we try not to do it willingly, though, but we are human. God is God. He is omnipotent. You know, he is He's immortal. You know, we're human. We're flawed, you know. So thanks to the serpent that tempted got tempted Eve and then Eve tempted Adam the aid of the tree of life you know now we're all flawed thanks to that stupid serpent mm -mm. well it wasn't just serpent it was Eve and then it was Adam they were all responsible because no matter how much serpent said here eat this fruit you know Eve could have said uh, no God said don't eat that and then you know, it's Adam's fault, too, because Eve ate it, and she offered it to Adam. Adam could have been like, we're, we're, no, 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 no. God said don't eat of that tree. But he ate of it, so all responsible. Some form or way, shape or form. And I don't know what would have happened if serpent hadn't. Would they eventually have tried that fruit? I don't know. See, only God knows that. The creator of everything. Only God knows that. Well, God and Jesus, the Holy Spirit. But, anywho, I've rambled on enough. Um, hopefully, when I go edit this video, everything's copacetic and looks good, sounds good. Ain't got jumpy. But, with the other camera doing these, I really never had jumpy video either. So, I don't know. We'll see. If y'all notice, because when I edit, sometimes I edit whole blocks, like 10, 15 minutes at a time. I won't watch that. I just know, okay, I know this is all good content, so I leave that in. I won't edit parts out. So if you guys notice any, like, 
herky jerky where the screen just like that, you know, just moves around. Let me know in the comments down below or send me a message, get with me on Facebook, however you need to. Um, because I need to know. Because if this thing's doing it too, I'm, this thing's going back and I'm going to get, I don't know, I'll get an iPhone, Google Pixel, I'll get something. But the, the, if this one does it too, then I'm done with Samsung. I ain't using their daggum phones no more. But I'm hoping it doesn't. I took a couple sample videos the other day and I didn't notice it jerking around. But I only took like a minute video. So y'all let me know down below if this thing jerks around, please. Because I need to know. I don't want to be putting out bad, you know, videos that are hard to watch. You know what I mean? So anyway, I hope y'all got something out of today. I know I did. Um, and until next time, I love each and every one of you. Y'all, please, please, please be good to each other. And I'll bring you something again real soon.